Houston, contact with the test one. Hi there, everybody. This is Space Cowboys podcast number seven. Number seven. Hi, Thais. Hi, Herbert. Thais Roos, my partner in crime, across the table. Yes, hi, Herbert Blinkensteinstein. What do you want to call yourself? Steinstein. I don't care. Steinstein, yes. In We're Dutch, it is Stein. Stein. Well, <laughs> welcome. Welcome back to all yeah, the listeners. Right. Okay. Dude, there's, a, there's a lot to talk about today. An awful lot. An awful yeah. lot. We have so many guest. things happen. Let, let's uh, have. Uh, let's introduce him first. Mm-hmm. Koen Janssen from Hyber, a space company over here in Amsterdam. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for joining today. Yeah, and what kind of space company? A Internet of Things connectivity company. Exactly. So that's what we're going to talk about today. They're launching satellites and covering the Earth with internet connectivity. Super exciting. And they're yeah. just beginning, right? We were only just starting, yeah. exactly. Oh, nice. We'll discuss nice. all of that. Yeah, we're so going to talk about... There's so many things to talk about, because so many things yeah. happen, Herbert, it's, it's this week. It was insane. news-rich week. It's Very been. news-rich. But I, I, when we started this show, we had discussions about how newsy it, it should be, this show. Yeah. And then I was very much like, ah, no, not too much news, because it doesn't teach you enough. Let's have one story of the week each. Exactly. How many stories do you have this time? I don't know how many. I, the, the thing with news is, when you just look at like everyday news, like you hear something happening on the other side of the planet, then to, I come from sort of a journalistic background where, um, well, the philosophy was that general news is more entertainment and doesn't teach you necessarily about what really goes on in the world because yeah. it's just basically news is that's what's different from yesterday. So every day you you hear what's different from the norm. And that's yeah. that's a pretty weird way to look at the world. That's why most news is bad news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you hear about car crashes, but you don't yeah. hear about all the cars who make it safely to that's work right. and back home. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, now, yeah, now I have I don't know seven, eight, eight news pieces. Okay, Be- so let's I, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I think they all they all tie into uh, broader stories. Good. Um, so. No. First, and I know never... no, first. Oh, no, okay, wait. So first, first, our guest. Yes, let's not be rude. That's right. Let's not be rude. Well, what's your story of the week? Yeah, I only heard about it recently, so um, I think this is also related to the topics we're discussing later on, which is aerospace. Mm-hmm. Um, I just heard that one of the leading drone manufacturers is actually installing some kind of geofencing, which will make sure that um, these drones will not fly by or any near one of the uh, airstrips for airports. Airports. Geofencing. Exactly. Uh, geo. It's as, as, as there's a fence, a, a, a digital fence, sort of. Yeah. So a digital fence, which makes sure that as soon as the drone is approaching the airstrip, it will actually fly away again, and therefore it hits a virtual wall. Exactly. Uh huh. And we have seen this issue being raised, especially in the Dutch community, before on multiple occasions, also in the UK, where yeah, actually Heathrow. incidents happened. I remember. Um. And now it's actually not the regulations, but the manufacturers themselves, so the market stepping in and you know creating some kind of policy to make sure that it all happens, which yeah. is funny to me because it's a Chinese manufacturer. So yeah. I'm happy to see Even these kinds the Chinese of Chinese don't want this bad rap and uh, d- d- tell one another we have to make sure that our drones don't trespass on the airport. Yeah. Um, exactly. So d- DJI, the, the drone maker, already has released updates for their uh, drones so that you cannot fly it in certain zones. Um, I'm actually not even updating my drone because then I won't be able to fly <laughs> it uh, in the garden um, where we have a little house because it's just in the aircraft zone. It's very illegal, oh, wow. but I don't fly it high. It's just that um, I know that the moment I update it, now I get a warning, but the moment I update it, I literally can't fly it anymore. So I will still, now it's my responsibility. And after that, it's just impossible. So okay. I want to be able to at least, at le- even if it's in the living room to test it out or something, I want to be able to to still turn it on. Because sooner or later, they're going to switch it off if you don't or update later. it. Yeah, anyway, exactly. Yeah. Sooner or later, um, that will be over. Yeah. And okay. it will be impossible to fly a drone anywhere where it's not allowed. Yeah. Updates as an instrument of power. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Thanks for your news. Yeah. Okay, uh, Thais. <laughs> Well, or, or, or Herbert, Get ready. maybe yeah. maybe maybe you first, and then I'll I'll fly through oh, yeah. all the news. Yeah, I, I have one simple new thingy, and that's uh, a video, um, and it's a flyover of Europa. So that's not Europe; it's Europa, Jupiter's moon. Is it by Juno? Who flew over Europa? It's it's based on data from Galileo. 
Oh. But it's new. It, uh, it appeared on YouTube um, just a couple of days ago, 9th of uh, February. I think. A reanalysis of, uh, of, of the data. Yeah. Oh, so look, look yeah. for that in the show notes. Let and me have a quick look. Yeah, and it's a perfect bridge to my first story. So it's... Uh, uh, so old Galileo data, yeah. creating a new... Yeah, 9th of February... Oh yeah, this great. Uh, video appeared, and it's based on Galileo. So nice. and it's fun. There's only one weird thing. It's about five minutes or something. Mm -hmm. um, you're flying backwards. Oh, okay. and I think that's not a very good idea. You want to fly forward, <laughs> right? <laughs> Other than that, it's spectacular. I mean, you're so close to the surface, and it really looks like a, a map with highways and junctions and everything. Really, and I mean, uh, uh, Europa's you, surface is alive. Europa has course, has right? this. Yes, it yeah. has this strange lined surface with with dots and 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 strange patches mm -hmm. and it's it's very interesting and really you can't help wondering how did this form we need to go there you know? yeah mm -hmm. we, we need do. to go there more we, we need to land there and, yeah. and walk around you know <laughs> yeah well you're carrying against humans spades in space and yeah. Yeah, exactly. no not space spades oh carrying spades spades exactly yeah dig, digging dig in holes there. nice and whatever yeah nice so that we'll put it in the show notes yeah. and uh, everybody can watch yeah Nice. So go ahead. Well, um, well, uh, okay. So I'm not a newsman, but here I go. So uh, um, uh, Ultimate Thule, you know, right? The the object that was New visited Horizons. by New Horizons. We talked about it Space a lot. Space Cowboys podcast number one. Number one, definitely. Um, everybody thought it was uh, some sort of like potato man. It looked like a snowman. Yeah. Uh, it does not. They they reanalyzed the uh, the data, and now it seems to be more like two pancakes slept together it's like two two weird pancakes instead of a snowman so joined at the edges joined at the edges yeah. it's like a super weird it's even weirder than it used to be <laughs> yeah yeah i saw some clickbait saying scientists are shocked by the shape of ultima thule <laughs> i'm not sure how shocked they are but yes it's 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 pretty cool it's a weird it's a weird little shape i suppose they were excited yeah they were excited yeah. but that was that was fun news less fun news is that mars one um has gone bankrupt uh, they have a foundation and a venture, and the venture went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Mars One, um, as people may, might know, um, the sort of, well, out there idea to get people to Mars in a sort of like reality show yeah. and fund, and, fund and have a mission a through that. Trip. And, and have a one-way trip also, mm -hmm. which would make for amazing television. You know, people start eating each other, all that stuff. Everybody dies. Yes, but NASA said it. Uh, yeah, it was it was unethical, um, and a lot of people seem to not take it seriously. I've spoken to some of the guys a couple of years ago, and um, I think they were always more about inspiring people and getting that conversation going than than literally actually, actually really well, go in there well you they know would, they, they would pretended tell they kept pretending they were going but now who 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 really thought that was the case like i, I see on reddit yeah, well. everywhere i see oh it's such a scam and it's such a scam because people paid 25 dollars for a ticket yeah. really if you're paying 25 dollars for a ticket right now to mars are you seriously considering <laughs> that you're that you have a ticket <laughs> like in 2030 really so no um, not me no no so we uh we, hopefully we will have the, the them on the show the one day uh, yeah we've we, been in touch we but we'll have see invited them yeah. and they're not doing it now Okay. But they may do it, do it in the future. Yeah, in uh, in a few months, uh, they'll probably be on the show to explain cool. what happened. Until then, uh, just a press release. So um, they have been declared bankrupt as of January 15th already. And actually. by the way, yeah. they issued a press release mm -hmm. telling the world that they're talking to a new investor. Yeah. And well, that's maybe part of the scam or part of the joke or, or part <laughs> of the inspiration project, like you call it. Exactly. But, um, they're talking to a new investor and yeah. they may not uh, stop doing what they did yeah. at all. Yeah, the foundation remains there. So the foundation the is yeah. still... So still you, could even, you could even say... Um, uh, going bankrupt is a publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're in the news again. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, getting exactly. them in the news. But I, so, I think yeah. my money is on Elon right now. That's, Elon. Uh, yeah, Tell Elon me about Elon. I think I think that 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 he at least has a ever has a very technical and practical idea on how to actually get there. Oh yeah. Um, sure. uh, not in least because he uh, he now knows what the ticket price is. That's the next story. Um, Twenty five dollars. 
Uh, <laughs> $25. <laughs> Slightly updated. <laughs> no, um, Elon Musk is uh, confident, as he said, that moving to Mars will one day cost $500,000. So half a million. That's credible. For a return ticket. Um, well, technically, actually, it's it's for the one-way ticket to Mars. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Elon Musk always says that the, the return ticket is free. Um, <laughs> if you don't like it on Mars and you want to go home to your mom, then that's allowed and uh, it's free. Because there'll be um, spacecraft um, su supply spacecraft coming in all the time. Exactly. So there will be room rockets flying the there. Back. Yeah, they're flying there and they're flying back. So uh, it, if if an empty rocket is going back to Earth, then you know you can just hop on to go back home. Yeah. So, so you feel lonely at Mars, and then you stay in another rocket for six months when you run. That's the, all that the by plan? yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Great. Hmm. I'm not sure if he thought about that. But at least uh, we now know. Uh, he says half a million. He's another skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, possibly uh, the, the ticket price might drop down to 100,000. Um, it's dependent on the volume, he says. Uh, eventually, so $100,000 to get to Mars, that's that's attainable. Like, not not really but if you sell your house or something like that that's yeah. that's this idea if you sell your house you can move to mars that's, you know the that's thing the with this kind of estimates they go up before they and go they down. take longer yes yeah. <laughs> especially with so. Elon musk yeah um then uh, uh um next story uh that's uh um well let's do uh, uh the senator Somebody is, is yeah. Mark, Mark Kelly, the former astronaut, is running for Senate, and not just any Senate seat. It's old. Uh, it's John McCain's uh, old seat. He's doing a John Glenn there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And he uh, uh, he had a brilliant campaign ad, and he was campaigning yeah. on the overview effect. And um, it would be great if we can uh, just have a little clip of it. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So, you know, seeing that sunrise from space uh, for the very first time, it is. Incredible. You know, it becomes pretty obvious pretty early when you get into space that we're all kind of in this together. When I launched on July 4th of 2006, Gabby thought I was going to propose from space. And then what happened? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I'm an yeah. identical so he's he, this is uh, uh mark kelly talking to his wife gabby giffords and she by her she herself is a well-known congresswoman yeah she got sh shot she once. got shot in uh, arizona during a campaign event in yeah 2010 11 something she like recovered that. very well and she recovered yeah very well i mean she's still she's speech impaired i think she still has, has some trouble but she uh um well they're a politically active family yeah um and of course, he's the brother of Scott Kelly, who, uh, mm -hmm. who of one year in space fame. Yeah. So it, it, while Mark stayed at home to be um, a control uh, experiment. Yes, exactly. So, so they, they did all these yeah. tests on Scott, and then Mark was only just to see what 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 <laughs> where, the, where the neutral was because he's an identical twin. So he's he's really a powerhouse when it comes to sort of like the respect that they have already garnered, and now suddenly he's going into politics and he's using the overview effect as the as, as, as the kickoff of, of his um uh campaign the overview effect the the, the effect that a lot of astronauts uh, describe when they see the earth yeah. in, in the darkness you get of space sentimental and everything and well you call it sentimental you get real you i get would i would say started. real you get real you, <laughs> you see that thinking about the environment and being yeah. nice to people and and, and that <laughs> that that our political borders are just that political borders and that we there's only once we are one species and yeah. we we no, but seriously it's, it's, yeah. it's almost a religious experience right i i would assume i have never yeah. been to space but i i can uh i yeah that's 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 what the astronauts that have, have witnessed it have told me Although um, Mike Mike Massimo, <laughs> the astronaut, I once talked to him and I asked him about it. He was a lot more sober about it. He was just like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's very nice cool. View. It's a nice view. <laughs> uh, I graduated at a company that would actually provide these kinds of services, sending people to 100 kilometers and back to Earth. Yeah. Uh, and for me personally, the motivation to actually graduate at that company is to get people to that spot and 
and that way have the highest impact on people's you know to change the world to for a better place All yeah right. so, so you're talking about virgin galactic uh no the once competitor because they went bankrupt uh as well but it's called xcore xcore mm-hmm. the company of uh, michel moll yeah back in the days yeah dutch entrepreneur did i hear virgin galactic Uh-oh. I I said the word. Yes, because <laughs> yeah. I got some news about Virgin Galactic. Tell me. Oh, here we go. Richard Branson knows he when he's going to space, right? If he knows. Rich, yeah, Richard Branson, you know the the CEO, of course, of Virgin. Yeah. Um, his company, Virgin Galactic, is uh, gearing up to uh, for their first space flights. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they had some trouble along the way, of course. Uh, but from the desert in New Mexico, they're going to shoot people up to sort of the highest regions of the atmosphere so you can s- experience the darkness of space, see the curvature of the Earth, and be weightless for just a few minutes. Um, and have this religi- religious experience. And have this religious experience, yeah. exactly. And then, uh, so he now knows the date. He, uh, They're all trying to get him up there um, <laughs> uh, on the 20th, 20th of July. And okay. what what is the 20th of July, I ladies know. and gentlemen? The birthday of the uh, first <laughs> moon landing. The moon landing, yeah. exactly. So it's 50 years. Yeah, it's 50 years after the first moon landing. So they want to turn it into event. I think I think there's going to be... It's a birthday l- anniversary. Right? Yeah, anniversary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. uh, nobody got born. Uh, no. I mean, Neil Armstrong didn't get a baby on, on the moon. Um, uh, so... They, uh, th- th- there's going to be so many things happening on July 20th this year, I think, for the 50 years. But that's that's what they're going. What's what they're going for? It's, it's cool. took a while. Yeah, very cool. And um, speaking of dates, we know another date. Um, this is for people at home to write in the calendar. We now know when Andromeda, the galaxy next door, mm-hmm. is going to crash into the Milky Way. Oops. We always buckle thought, up. Yeah, buckle <laughs> up. We always thought it was going to be three. 3.9 billion years, but ter- as it turns out, it's going to be 4.5 billion years from Ooh. now. Okay, that's yes. one thing that we got some more schedule. time. Then, then yes. we're safe for now. Yes, <laughs> we're yeah, we're safe and we're uh, we can chill. Um, and it was all based on uh, Gaia data. Um, Gaia, of course, ESA project that we talked about Anthony a few episodes Brown. ago. Anthony Brown episode. What was it? Four. Yeah, maybe. So yeah. all this data, they st- keep on reinterpreting it and. Uh, Drawing these new conclusions from it, which Good. is great. Yeah, which is great. Um, which almost rounds it up. There's one last thing. Jim Bridenstine, uh, the space agency, NASA's uh, administrator, uh, called for the best and brightest of the American industry to help design and develop human lunar landers because he's really set for the moon now. He said, we need to go back to the moon and we need to stay there and build a base. So he sort of had a kickoff event for that. So, so what's the idea? NASA can't... Design their own lunar landers? Um, I'm not really sure. It was just a pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't let's know. get the public involved. Yeah, let's get the public involved. And, and yeah. we, he was looking for the best and brightest to, to help him with, a, okay. with it. It's yeah. always a good idea. Yeah, always a good idea. And then, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, we're going to the last piece of news that I have, but it perfectly ties in, Kuhn, with mm-hmm. the company that you have. Um, because it's about internet in space. It would be great to be able to go online anywhere in the world. Greenland, Antarctica. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Imagine you're deep down in the jungle and you see all these beautiful animals and you have no way to look on Wikipedia what animal it is. It or would be share terrible. It on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Or share it on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. Stream. It would be terrible. Like kids everywhere are getting panic attacks over that thought. So um, a lot of people are working on internet in space. Kuhn, you are. We're going to talk about it, but Elon Musk is as well. And he just filed, um, uh, well, he asked for permission uh, f- to build a million ground stations. What? Yeah. A million? What again? A million. <laughs> he wants to eventually build a million. Um, well, he, the SpaceX has already uh, received the go-ahead from the FCC on the launch of uh, almost 4,500 satellites that will make up its Starlink internet constellation. Uh, but it hasn't really said what, what sort of what it's gonna what they're gonna do but they need these ground stations uh in order to download link it all and to actually get people connected to the internet so yeah. um it's not that he will start with building a million but they want they've mm-hmm. already asked uh, a permit for up to a million of these ground base stations to the fcc so yeah so just to clarify the yes, situation then, right away <laughs> yes yes hold on okay. Kun, because that that completely wraps up all the news Da-da-da-da. from this week So Kuhn, yeah. Before you start, we have one thing, and then you can you can enlighten us on all these things because we don't know what we're talking about. Sponsors, and you do. Yes, I want to go to the people that support us. Go ahead. Well, 
Where do they support us? On Patreon. On Patreon. What's the URL? Slash patreon.com slash Space Cowboys. Exactly. And that's uh, what uh, keeps this show going. Um, if you uh, want to support this show, go to patreon.com slash Space Cowboys and support us there. And now, cool. without further ado. Hyber Koen Janssen. Hyber yeah. Koen Janssen. Yeah, yes. before uh, actually jumping into Hyber <laughs> itself, it's of course always very nice to clarify the situation between Internet via satellites and Internet of Things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think that's a, a great first start to actually know what Hyber is doing and what other people are doing. Such because as it's different. And there's multiple markets. Right? Exactly. Yep. Multiple applications. So the, the thousands, maybe thousands, I don't know how many ground stations are required for Starlink is because they basically have a gateway or a big dish somewhere in the middle of the jungle you just described. And you can basically, just like with Wi-Fi, connect to that one gateway. And that gateway will then connect to the satellites. So therefore you still need a thousand, probably even more, ground station everywhere around the world to cover that area. So it's not a direct to satellite kind of connection. Mm -hmm. Where Hyber, uh, we only transmit very small pieces of data, which is 144 bytes, basically a tweet or an SMS site message. And wherever your asset is, it directly sends it to the satellite. So you don't need any additional infrastructure on the ground to actually get your data to the satellite. You go straight from the from the... From the, from object, the thing, from, from the thing, from your the, thing, from your, thing <laughs> from your digital thing, straight to the satellite. Yeah, 144 bytes as a packet. Yeah, so, and, and how, how many seconds does it take? Uh, less than one. It's like okay, a yeah, few so, milliseconds. Yeah, and so why lower Earth orbit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but you, then you can also. So it's 144 bytes a second. I would assume, or it does no, not work so, that way. Um, then again, if you want internet, you are used to real-time connectivity, mm -hmm. always broadband, on, broadband, whatever, broadband yeah. whatever you want to call it. While with Internet of Things, these devices only communicate once in a while. So again, depending on uh, applications, you only need to send your message once in so many times. So with our system right now, we have two satellites up in space. Uh, we can basically cover the whole Earth at least once per day. And then at the poles about 16 to 20 times right now. However, that means that the modem and the devices on the ground are basically sleeping most of the time. Mm -hmm. Then waking up and the satellite passes over, sends that data, goes back into sleeping mode. So the power requirement is also extremely low yeah. for our network. And what sort of things are we talking about? Like weather stations or what, what, what sort of objects... Yeah, so do we need to think about Hyber itself only focuses on the connectivity part. So mm -hmm. we are getting integrated into all kinds of sensors. But that goes from weather stations indeed to agricultural sensors to basically container tracking, logistics, mm. uh, silo monitoring, whatever you name it. And, and does this already exist in some sort of way? Uh, in a very expensive way, definitely, because there are already other satellites out there. On the other hand, uh, there are things like LoRa and Zigfox, which is Internet of Things connectivity in rural areas. So here in, in Amsterdam, for example. A, where what, a rural area? Uh, <laughs> urban area. Oh, urban area. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, no so there you can already connect, but that's only about 10% of the world. So therefore, our system basically takes over connectivity for that remaining 90%. Ah, okay. Yeah. So um, that's, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, um, you have launched two satellites recently. Yes. Was that January, December? Uh, the first one was end of November, and the next one oh. uh, within a week. So, uh, oh, okay. really? And yeah, that, so was your, that was your there. first one? Yeah, those were the first two. Yeah. Where, where, where were you uh, at that moment? <laughs> on both occasions, I was actually in, uh, in Amsterdam at the headquarters of our company. Mm -hmm. um, the week before, though, I was in California to watch it live, but it got postponed, postponed, <gasps> postponed. Was I went Van back. Was it Vandenberg? Ty knows Vandenberg. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> was it was it Vandenberg yeah. uh, Air Force Base? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what, late November? Oh wait, no wait. I was yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. I was. Eventually, it it went up in uh, the beginning of December. Oh okay. Yeah, it's a different one than I. So, so. Um, you have these two satellites up, and um, I guess they're in polar orbits, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Correct. So they're going over the poles, North Pole, South Pole, and um, uh, all the way around. And since the Earth is rotating, yeah. Um, within a certain time frame, you cover every piece of ground on Earth. Yeah, so basically what happens is uh, it goes from pole to pole, as you explained, about 16 times per day. Yeah. And therefore, as the Earth rotates underneath it, it, it basically scans or peels off the Earth like an apple. And we see uh, places at the equator at least twice per day and then at the pole 16 times yeah. per satellite. So with per two satellite. of them, we already see every 
every place four times. And, so, and are they in very separate orbits? Like where are these two? So, so they launched and so where did they go sort of? Uh, they have different altitudes. So therefore one is about um, 500 kilometers altitude and the other one is about 575. So mm -hmm. because there's a small difference, the, un the one is basically undertaking the other one. Of yeah, they're different, different the orbital one. periods. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, are they part of a larger constellation that's coming? Uh, definitely, yeah. So How's that going to work? Um, well, over time we need to launch more satellites towards the network to basically have more uh, demand, so we have more capacity. Yeah. Yeah. But also as we add more satellites to the system, we also have better service levels. Yeah, so right more now, coverage, basically. We yeah. say in Europe, for example, we can serve you four times per, per day. But as we add more satellites, uh, the current plans are to add even more than 100 we will be able to go to real to near time or near to real time connectivity. And, and do you have paying customers? Uh, tons, yeah. So tons. Uh, uh, over 50 have signed up already. Yeah. Wow. And most of them are ready to deploy uh, once we commercially uh, launch the, the service, which will happen in a, in a few weeks for sure. So you haven't launched the, the, so right now you're testing? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. And so what co sort of companies? Are they? Um, from asset tracking companies to agricultural companies. Um, to give you a good example, there's a company in Belgium, it's called Ovinto, and they monitor the uh, unpowered real assets for companies such as Byron, BuzzF, and Dow Chemical. Mm -hmm. So eventually the end customer that's, that's basically using the data are the Fortune 500 companies that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. But our paying customer is then the, the small monitoring expert, so to say. And what sort of assets do they monitor? Um, so the uh, the goods that are being transported via the railroads. Ah, okay, yeah. They need to be monitored where they are for insurance, for safety. So that's so. like what you said, container tracking. Yeah. yeah. And then so every few, so considering the coverage that you said, so a few times a day, this... It will it will give a bleep out. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So this is where I am. This is where I am. And the, uh, there there was no existing technology that could do this before. Well, uh, there are two options, of course. First, you have uh, terrestrial connectivity, as we call it. So that is either GSM or uh, yeah, the the Internet of Things connectivity is like Zigfox and LoRa. There's a few possibilities, right? Um, mm -hmm. But they have limited range. And therefore, especially and these, coverage in some cases. Yeah, they go yeah. in and out of these these areas. So you want a solution for the full trip. Then you come to connectivity via satellites, which is very power hungry, but also extremely expensive. So what we offer for six euros per year, uh, competitors from the traditional satellite industry offer that for twenty euros per month. Wow, but six euros per okay. year for for let's say a, a for once 144 per day, bytes once per day once per day so that's a negligible amount of money yeah. well it's a, a high volume uh, game yeah so. okay so that you're you're uh, trying for yeah. to, to get so many customers yeah. that is going to uh, you're going to end up with a significant amount of money anyway yeah, exactly yeah. and so yeah. you say it's 144 bytes i'm pretty intrigued by that by that tweet size mm -hmm. because it's so small right um Where's the bottleneck in this? Is this just the way you uh, you earn your money? So you sell only a few bytes, or or is it the satellite itself that cannot handle more? Is it something has, does it have to do with sending it up there? The funny part is that most of the customers do not demand more data. Mm -hmm. So what they are used to with Internet of Things is just hey, it's me, okay, yeah. or I'm on. Yeah. So you have twelve bytes of data or something. Yeah, an or ID and an I'm I al I'm alive. Yeah. I like exist. This is the temperature. This is the air pressure. This is the humidity. Or a GPS I mean, coordinates. All maybe? of that fits in a tweet. Exactly. Fits in yeah. an SMS. Yeah. yeah. No problem. But but Internet of Things is even smaller usually. Mm -hmm. So what we said is okay. Um, what do our customers actually need? <coughs> and apparently a tweet message is good enough to store uh, usable data. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, even for a full day because there are, there are always two questions here is how fast do you want to have the data so is there latency between actually getting the data back uh, to the customer and how much data need they an need to do they need to analyze the, uh, the situation at that yeah. so if you're going to scale this up to thousands of customers um, I always looked at the internet of things as basically my 
I don't know, my my fridge telling my phone to order new milk because I'm out of milk in my It's an in example. My fridge. Whatever, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's yeah. how it started. Exactly, that's how it started. <laughs> Oldest but, example, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this this seems something as a very much a service level, a monitoring service, um, something like that. Can you can you just sketch your future for me of the Internet of Things through satellite? Yeah, so I, you know, the, the lovely thing, and that's maybe a bit weird in this broadcast, but... Um, what we are aiming for is that we take out the sensitivity of the satellite part, right? If you are buying a, a SIM card of some of the telecom providers, you're not worried about where the operating towers actually are. So, of course, space is mm. sexy, space is cool, but, you know, that part works, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, therefore, I, I kind of um, go away from the question, what does satellite IoT look like, mm -hmm. but more IoT in general, and therefore... Everyone always thinks that you know your, you know, you know where your stuff is. You know what is happening anywhere around the world, but people don't. And I see in the foreseeable future that we will get to the point where everything that people want to measure can actually be measured. And we are apparently one of those companies that can help you get the data back to where you want to have it. If a ship nowadays, if a ship goes from from uh, Shanghai to here, you can track it basically the entire way, or an airplane as well. How does that work yeah. then? Well, How is that different? You have radar, you have uh, Inmarsat, uh, so, so GPS. So they, they maybe have a, they have a they have a more expensive subscription right now, maybe to a. To, to something that's yeah yeah that's a lot well, more. I mean, if if you have a ship, you can afford a bit more uh, expensive uh, subscription exactly. to so some kind uh, of service. I'm talking about a huge container ship, but you're talking about a very small, tiny object that is. It's that a funny also example trackable. because one yeah. of our customers cool. is actually uh, trying to catch fish in a legal way. <laughs> Catch fish uh, in a legal way. Wow, wow, how, how unique. Yeah. yeah. No, but they have to <laughs> remove <laughs> that in that area that they actually caught it, that it was not a marine reserve uh -huh. or oh, uh, yeah. that it was actually allowed to catch that kind of fish in that area. And they have no clue, if we're talking about a uh, fisher boat with six people rowing on it, mm -hmm. they have no nah, no clue or, or how to actually prove that. So we made a system that they can actually press a button like, hey, I, I, I caught the cod here. Uh, Sent. And then we will actually get that data and they can prove to the government and eventually to the EU and, uh, and the USA that they are allowed okay. to export that fish. Hey. So you, being yeah. Hyber, are also in the business of designing stuff to use your service, your own service? Yeah, well, at the very beginning, uh, we have to make sure that the use cases are actually out there yep. and everything works. So we are very much involved in uh, getting these use cases up and running. Yep. Eventually, towards the future, we can say, hey, these use cases have worked with this kind of hardware, with this kind of software, etc. And then we can t basically take a step back regarding the hardware infrastructure that we are now uh, co-developing in some cases. I, uh, I love these examples. Do you have another one? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can keep on going, but yeah. uh, we have a few funny ones where apparently there are about 80 million beehives in the world, and everybody knows that beehives are, or actually the bees are dying at a very rapid rate recent, yeah. uh, in recent years. I'm sensing an internet of bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah so ahead. these, um, about, uh, I believe, about 60 million of them are actually used for cross-pollination. Uh -huh. And they are being sh well relocated. Beehives, the beehives, right? yeah. beehives, yeah. beehives, yeah. beehives yeah. not yeah. bees, beehives. Yeah. Beehives, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they are being relocated every six weeks to a new location. But to make sure the bees are okay, they need to know the location. They need to know the temperature and the kind of noise that they make. Wow. And then if you know the situation is not healthy, they can actually go there and take care of it. Yeah. But yeah. right now they are just dying. All the and time. collect data on right. maybe areas of where more bees are dying or exactly. yeah, where they're. I'd like to know more this is, now. This is brilliant. This is really cool. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. It is. And I'd we like to know have more about, about the satellites themselves. Are you ready for that? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, let's hear it out on the satellites <laughs> so, themselves. Yeah. Tell, tell me what's, what's in a satellite of the kind that, that you are using. Yeah, just to make sure that the size that we have, we are having very small satellites, about a shoebox. And within this industry, we call them used. And one U is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. It's kind of a standard form within the small satellite industry. Yeah. So our shoe-sized uh, satellites are 6U. It's 1 by 2 by 3 U's, simple building blocks. Okay, uh, 6 blocks. So uh, 10 by 20 by 30. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in there we have uh, deployable solar panels, so it actually has some power. 
there are antennas in there that actually make sure that uh, we can communicate with the satellite. Mm -hmm. We have different antennas for different purposes. So we can do uh, TTNC, as they call it. So basically update the satellite on certain hardware or a certain software as well as the telemetry of, you know, the health keeping of the satellite. Okay, so you can do some maintenance from the ground. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, what it is used for in a real way is actually getting the data from the ground nodes to the satellite that is a, has a certain antenna and then sending it back to Earth as well. Then within the satellite, we need to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. So it has an attitude determination and control system that it actually points the antenna towards Earth. And uh, there are a few brain cells, basically. So there are some computers in there. Um, so it's it's yeah relatable to a smartphone, but then in space. Yeah, but all of that, <laughs> all of the stuff you mentioned fits in a shoebox-sized thing. Yeah, the funny part is that it's our incredible. next satellites will be even half the size. Wow, wow. that's incredible. Yeah. Who designs such a thing? It's uh, basically another company here based in uh, the Netherlands. They are, uh, are called ISIS. Not the best name, probably, but All right, yeah. innovative <laughs> solutions in space. We know them. We've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah We're trying to get a hold of them to appear in the, on this show. All right. Maybe later. Yeah. Um, so they are one of the first believers in Hyper, and uh, we have uh, designed the first two satellites together with them. And they are eventually manufacturing, testing them, and then also uh, operating in until this very moment, because as soon as we are operationally live, we will actually do everything on our own. Yeah, beautiful. Um, now, can can we follow a bit or a bite? Let's talk bites. <laughs> can we follow a bite from my weather station on Greenland uh, to my place back home? Yeah, of course. How does that go? Yeah, so uh, first of all, you have a sensor at your weather station, so it measures yeah. something uh, like data that gets into a digital uh, bit. But Te temperature, let's keep it yeah, simple. It is. Yeah. Um, and that, that little package of information is then sent to our modem that is integrated in your weather station. Mm -hmm. So our modem exactly knows when... We the need to buy a modem from you too. Yeah, exactly. Is it okay. a USB modem? Uh, it's actually integrated. So it's a Integrated chip. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we buy a weather station with your chip integrated. That's that usually right? how it works. Yeah. Okay. Do you get a commission? Uh, we are not into the hardware business, so we, we, we like to get rid of that as soon as we can. Okay, okay. so you issue a standard or something, yeah. and somebody else builds the chips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's, they it's, are it's on the market already, Yeah, these chips? You can uh, either uh, buy them from us directly, but also on uh, third parties already. Okay. And so then the manufacturers of these things, <laughs> devices, yeah. they have to integrate that chip into their, into their thing. Yeah. Uh, and you, you say that's not a good business model? I'm not saying it's not a good business model. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that we as a connectivity provider yeah. are willing to sell subscriptions yeah. and therefore are not in the hardware business. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. So yeah. Sound. Yeah. Focus so, now. Anyway. So uh, my, the bit is my bite is passing the modem. What happens next? Basically, it's waiting until the very moment that the satellite passes by. So until that okay. moment, it's in a buffering state in our modem. And when the satellite passes by, it actually uh, awakes the antenna, I would say, and then uh, the data is transmitted towards the... So there's some protocol and the satellite goes knock-knock. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there, yeah. there's a packet that it gets like a... Yeah, so a there's no handshake, oh, but it, it does get a signal like, hey, I'm, okay. I'm above you, just send the data right now. <laughs> yeah. um, so the data is transmitted, goes pretty fast with the you know, lightning speed. At the satellite there, it's actually with the antenna uh, received again. Then all the data is stored until the satellite passes by one of the ground stations. Those are those bigger dishes that you have seen on, uh, in the TV screens. Um, there the data is uh, transmitted back to Earth. Th these really big ones in the jungle? That one, those ones, or just big, um, di regular dishes? Uh, regular dishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, 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 I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. And mm -hmm. from there, the, the data becomes available via an API. Because uh, yeah. most of the time, you already have data about weather stations via different channels as well. So, therefore, you get the raw data. But if not, we can help you with a little bit of the visualization. Yeah, well. okay. But basically, I can log into your ground sta station or something. Yeah, the mission control Pick area. up the data. Yeah. yeah. And then okay. the, the packet is, is, is yours, I guess. You you can only see the packets that were sent by your devices? Or how does that... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, everybody has an account. Everybody yep. who Every has a subscription has an account and uh, automatically gets their own data. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and you have... 30 customers, you said? Uh, 50 by now. 50? Yeah. And um, when, when, when was your first customer? 
Um, I think a, a few months after we launched the company. So the company is launched in June 2016, about two and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and months later, we signed the first customer with uh, levels of intent. Yeah. Uh, MOUs, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, we had to develop the rest of the technology because we basically started with a business ID and then, okay, so we need satellites. Oh, <laughs> all Where, right. How and do then, you launch one? Yeah, so let's, we'll get into that later probably. Um, but yeah, so it started off with letters of intent. People are willing or companies are willing to uh, to test this out. And I think the first actual contract was signed maybe half a year ago or so. Oh, yeah. And so now that the satellites are up, uh, are you providing them with data now? Are you providing data to your first customers? No. So right now, as of today, yeah. and this can change in, in days, literally. And today is the 13th of <laughs> February. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we we are in the final testing stages of, of the satellites, and then we're comfortable that, you know, the connectivity is stable. And these antennas that, that are now at our uh, customers can actually send the data towards our satellite. Mm. Okay, and these 50 yeah. customers, do they bring in six euros a year each? Basically, yeah. That's, that's per, not, su- not per like subscription. So, of per, course, per thing. Yeah, exactly. Not per customer, because no. one customer may have thousands exactly. things. of things. Uh, so, uh, all, so now it's becoming clear. So, there you're getting some turnover. Ah, so, there we are a talking million about. million beehives times six. Exactly. Eight. So, it's, right. it's about a, right. a high volume play. Of course, every customer that we have till date is starting off with kind of like a small amount to make sure the system works. Let's so say 50 yeah. or 100 cases. Um, but from there on, and each if customer you perform well. Yeah, yeah, every customer is capable of scaling up to the tens the upgrade. of upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. Nice. Um, and so, how's the test looking? So till date, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the the satellites perform better than expected, that's and it. everything went through till date. Uh, yeah, more than nominal, I would say. Um, but everyone has some hiccups at some point. So uh, it's the first time we do this. And of course, we were not thinking that everything would go as smooth as can be. So, uh, yeah, we're learning, we're testing, we're tweaking, uh, finding out that software that is older actually runs better than the newer ones. Yeah. And, you know, these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, it's stuff everyone goes through, um, not to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Makes so sense. how about ground stations? Elon Musk says he needs a million of those. Yeah. I'm still trying to calculate in my head. Um, how many years that will cost? Suppose you build one ground station a day. Yeah. All right. That means one thousand. Well, why, why, uh, in, why in, only in one three, a day? In three one, just a, just yeah. a way of an example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's one thousand in three years. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in that case, you will need three thousand years to get to a million. Okay. Just an example. <laughs> how, many, how many ground stations do, do you need? Yeah, so the the beauty of our system is that the communication nodes on the ground directly go to the satellite, so we don't need additional infrastructure on that side. Mm -hmm. However, um, the data needs to go back down from the satellite back to Earth, and therefore we need ground stations as well, and we have vision to have about 20 around the world. 20. And is a ground station something you have to build, or is it can it just be somebody with a, 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 a saucer on their balcony, you know, a dish? Yeah, uh, there are a few companies providing these kinds of services. However, because of physics, um, every frequency requires a different dish. And so physics. even though yeah. someone has a dish in their backyard, doesn't mean that our frequency can be received on that dish. Okay. Um, and right now, what it looks like is that we will actually build our own network as well, just to make sure that you know everything is in control. Okay, there's some cost there. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. How, how much does it cost to build a ground station? Uh, we envision that it would cost about 200k, so 200,000 euros each. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so there's some serious investment there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's an expensive <laughs> hobby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how about, how how about many, investors? Well, and how many satellites do you need? Uh, we talked about ground stations, but you have yeah. two satellites now. How how will that grow? Um, well, at very first, we envision to be okay with 48 satellites, which will cover the Earth at least uh, on every piece every 15 minutes. Uh, but right now, because of the huge demand that we see, we have to add more capacity. So really? we're aiming at about 100 satellites right now. 100. And and, and what do you when do you hope that the hundredth will be launched? Uh, that should be in uh, 2021, I believe. What? That's super fast. 2021. It's in two years. Okay. Yeah. How, how many satellites a week will that be? Could you do? Could you <laughs> <laughs> two. <laughs> One a week. You have so a lot of work to do. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm only here for one hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of money to spend. Yeah. Because uh, how much does a launch cost? Yeah, so the, the launch I just heard from uh, going to Mars would only be 100k. <laughs> Um, or 200 yeah, eventually, well, eventually. We yeah. don't believe that so far. Yeah. No, we, right ahead. now we pay about uh, 50k per kilogram, which mm -hmm. means with uh, the uh, shoe size satellites that we have, we pay about half a million per launch. Okay. 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 So, so, that, so that's, that's the height? same as, as Elon Musk says uh, for, an, uh, for in, in, in the near future for Mars. So little shoe box right. <laughs> or, or human to Mars, about the same price. Who's investing in Hyber? Yeah, uh, we have um, quite some investment rounds uh, successfully completed already, mm -hmm. uh, starting off with the founders themselves and eventually okay. several business angels. Um, You're one of the founders. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but recently, just before we launched uh, our satellites, we have a venture capital firm that also invested in the firm. Um, yeah, so we are getting towards venture capital or family offices. And till date, we have raised about 20 million US dollars. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool kind of money. And, okay. and how, how, tell me again about the launch in, at, at Vandenberg. What kind of rocket was it? It's the, the SpaceX rocket. Oh, it was it's, on the Falcon 9. Yeah, Falcon 9. Uh, it was the one that was being launched for the third time. Yeah, really. So you were just, your shoebox was uh, part of... Part of there. On board, yeah. <laughs> True. on board uh, a reused rocket. Yeah. That's what it amounts to. That's cool. That must have been a good okay. day. Uh, saw that, like, really last. exciting, yeah. When it went up eventually, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, yeah, just, it was a, a nice week in, uh, in California as well while being there, but we were, yeah. uh, I think two hours after we landed, we heard that it was being postponed for a few days. So we stayed there, then another day, then another two days, and we were like, yeah, well, okay, forget about it. It was rainy and snowy around there. It was that. As well. Yeah. Um, well, and the the, um, the wildfires were there as well. Yeah, the wildfires. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Big a lot of going on. Uh, and in the meantime, we had the Indians. We were, were not communicating at all about their launch date, except for the fact that it was going up. You're referring to the other launch, which was from India. Exactly. And the funny part is that we have two satellites, one being called Hyper 1, the other one Hyper 2. And um, because of the delays of the Indians at the very first, actually Hyper 2 would go up as the first one. So everyone got a bit confused, yeah. but the Indians made up, uh, SpaceX got postponed and Hyper 1 went up uh, eventually as the first <laughs> one. <laughs> Didn't Voyager 2 got launched before Voyager 1? Yes. I seem to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voyager 2 went up before okay. Voyager So that wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> no, exactly. It has been done before. Uh, and and uh, uh, so when is the next launch? And will it be again on a Falcon 9? Uh, yeah, so there are there are two ways forward here. The first one is actually going with ride shares, as we call them. So that is the PSLV in India or the uh, SpaceX launch, for example, in uh, in the States. Where yeah, I, I was wondering, how does it work? Uh, how do you wind up with one satellite uh, on a Falcon and another satellite being launched from India? Yeah, so to basically tell that story, um, what we started off with is saying, okay, we want to launch a satellite. So we went to ISIS, the company in Delft, and they have a brokering service as well. It's called okay. ISL. So they build satellites and they can organize your trip to space. Exactly. ISIS yeah. and ISIL, yes. Yeah, <laughs> correct names. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically you, you go to a, a broker and they... They are the ones taking care of, of it from there on. Okay, so you just book a trip and somebody else um, uh, takes care of it and yeah. uh, tells you where you have to bring your satellite, basically. Well, we, we uh, as they built a satellite eventually. They do that too. <laughs> um, all we did is, uh, is say, yeah, well, uh, sign a launch contract and they took care of the shipping and everything. So uh, it sounds, sounds very the easy. They send it in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you just and I can, uh, can have a space company. It's easy. We should send something up to space. Yeah, we, we will. Patreon someday. supporters, please support us more <laughs> yeah. so we can shoot stuff up, the, up in the space. Just half a million dollars will do. <laughs> yes, that, that's great. Yeah. We'll, we'll do something. We'll, we'll figure something funny yeah. out. Yeah, 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 a microphone. I don't know. Yeah, why not? To listen to, listen to space. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be space great. Space microphone. And so, what do you think? When do you think? Uh, have you already submitted your next one? Yeah, so we have uh, two launch contracts actually already in place. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are with dedicated launchers. So that means that the rocket will be much smaller and our satellite will be the only one of one of the only ones being in that rocket. So um, only a few, but will there be more than one? Uh, can, can you shoot more, more satellites at once in one rocket? Yeah, so what you have seen in SpaceX and also with PSLV in India is that about 60 satellites can go up. 
Mm -hmm. And the world record right now is about 103, I believe. Um, <laughs> wow. So, you know, usually two Range Rovers go up in the rocket. And now we're talking about true-sized satellites. So you can fill it up with tons of these small ones uh, and then share the cost of going up. That's yeah. why it's called a ride share. Yeah. The only issue is that we have with these ride shares is, okay, so all of these satellites are going to the same place. Yeah. And that's How not... do you make sure they don't collide? For instance, well, th that is a technical way of you know taking care of things there that, that yeah. can be handled, but just release them one by one. By one. Yeah, so th yeah. and there's a timer, software is there that that is being taken care of. Cool. But cool, we though. don't want to go cool. to the rest of you know to the places or the orbits where the rest of the guys are going as well. Mm -hmm. We want to go to our own orbits to make sure that we have a communicating service that will be you know um, covering the Earth at a um, continuous way. So yeah, you want full coverage, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So to go there, we need to go to different orbits and therefore we need dedicated rights. So we cannot go with the rest of them because they will all end up in the same orbit where our two satellites already are. So we need to have yeah. different uh, orbits. Sharing and therefore, a rocket means more or less sharing the same orbit after exactly. release. Yeah. All of them are going you in the same You have direction. so much fuel and you can change the orbit where you are very much. Not so much. That's no. what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, so uh, this, uh, you're as we as we talked about at the beginning of this show, you're not the only one working on internet in space. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have competitors? Yeah. So the the beauty of this thing is that as of day one, we are a global business because we see the whole globe. <laughs> But that also means that a company from Canada or a company from Australia is a direct competitor. While what you see with sure. uh, with apps, for example, you you start in the Netherlands and then you expand to the Benelux. You know that's a huge step, and then yeah. maybe to, to Germany and Luxembourg. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's lovely. And then um, Europe, and then America, and yeah. Um, well, yeah. So there are like a handful of other uh, companies out there that doing somewhat the same. Uh, we have one very key benefit that is maybe hard to understand, but if you are talking and communicating you are using frequencies so a radio signal goes in through the air and if you want to do this you have to apply for a frequency at the international telecom union so it's a united nations body that takes care of all the frequencies anywhere around the world for your television your radio your microwave and also for internet of things connectivity so what we did is we applied for that frequency just before our competitors. No. And that means that all the competitors have to coordinate with us whether they are in the way of our devices. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's a, it, yeah, it's hard to understand for a lot of people, but and, it and is your answer is always, benefit. yes, you're always in the way. Basically, you're <laughs> on top of everybody else. Wow. Uh, to a certain degree, yeah. Of course, we have to uh, be fair to other people as well. So we yeah. cannot say no to, to every situation, mm -hmm. but uh, we are in a very prime position there. Yeah. And so this is then very different from being able to do live streams from the jungle uh, exactly at, at, at a higher speed do you, do you have any clue of how how big the how how high of a speed you can get when it comes to regular internet in like uh, something like starlink that elon musk is doing yeah so what i've seen several orders now, of magnitude I yeah you can go into the terabytes per second terabytes but that is then divided by these ground stations so yeah, yeah. so from the satellite itself you can have terabytes of data screaming down at one point really and this is all uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously radio signals, but I'm so, sort of amazed by by how uh, uh, yeah that you can shoot it up to space with so quickly. Like my Wi-Fi isn't that fast. Yeah, if you have enough power. Yeah. C can you it's tell about me power? Okay. Why, why does Hyber do this, and why are you not doing what Elon Musk does? Is it easier what you do? Um, well, our our model is is more simple, I would say. Yeah. Um, because there is tons of technology to be developed even for our simple business model and i mm -hmm. put quotes in there but yeah um you know what we saw as as the market for our case is very simple and short amounts of data and maybe later on because right now we only provide one-way traffic so it goes from the sensor to the satellite and back to earth but we do not provide customers with an ability to actually go back to the sensor and say hey turn on turn off or whatever mm -hmm. okay. yeah. reprogram or update, the thing yeah. update yeah, yeah. yeah. because you know, that's another technology that needs to be developed from our side. It's not there right now. Not yet. Okay. So You're working course, on it. Yeah, towards the future, we sure. will provide two-way communication okay. as well. But okay. right now, we say, hey, let's start off with, you know, the main business case, which is one-way traffic only once in a while. Yeah. 
And as we grow the network, we can add all these kinds of futures, but let's make sure okay. we can make money right so away. So you can be in business from day one exactly. and have income and use that to expand your services. Yeah, although we still need a little bit of investment money. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and not to be too doomy, doomy or gloomy, um, but uh, will you then be disrupted by these faster networks that might be coming online? Yeah, not so much because, uh, as mentioned a couple of times in this uh, podcast, is they need a lot of power and they always require a ground infrastructure. So as long as you have moving and applications... Or what's exactly. So we see these three pillars as being low cost, um, low power and also global. So one frequency means one software, one hardware around anywhere around the world. Those three pillars are actually uh, what we call our, you know, uh, competitive advantage here. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If I can make an analogy, just like nowadays, I guess the buses that, that you, if you check in here in the Netherlands, you have this digital pass, right? You bleep, mm -hmm. you bleep a door and that all goes through old GSM networks. Um, there's still a market for old GSM networks for specific applications, whereas it's very different from, of course, Wi-Fi or 5G yeah. or 4G or whatever. It hangs in the air. So yeah. the, the, the Internet of Things or Internet in Space will also be a multi-layered uh, system. Yeah. Okay. And I was going to ask, do you have the ambition to one day offer broadband services? Uh, but I would guess the answer is no, because then you will be competing with everybody else. Yeah, so I think that our company is Internet of Things uh, connectivity only. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the next step would probably be doing something with the data instead of going to uh, broadband internet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very okay, cool. cool. When's, the, when's the next satellite going up? Um, at the end of this year, we hope to oh, launch this year. Uh, two more satellites. Yeah. Oh, okay. So th your big year will be 2020 then yeah. for most of them to go up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So the the rest of the year you'll be uh, providing services to these customers, to these first customers that you have and further testing, I would assume. Yeah, so we have a lot of development still going on from a technical point of view. Mm -hmm. But the big thing is, of course, serving our first customers and scaling them, you know, from these first devices to the tens and hundred thousands and then uh, we need more demand, which ultimately being filled up by more satellites. Yeah. And will you be staying in Amsterdam as you develop the company? Uh, that's a good one. We already <laughs> have several entities around the world. Uh, so therefore... You I mean offices? Uh, yeah, at least entities. And What's an entity? So from a legal structure, yeah, uh, uh, right. you can oh, have see. several legal entities around the world, like Luxembourg, uh, two in the US. We're setting up a company in Spain as well. It's so um, like a letterbox with your logo on it. Uh, basically. Yeah. And uh, we are in discussions as well to actually open uh, sales offices on, on multiple uh, places around the world okay. as well now. So do you need to do a lot of sales? We, we've been talking competition and, and everything. Uh, do you need to do your very best to get customers or do they come flocking to you? Yeah, the latter. It's, it's amazing how many applications we are not aware of. That can be served with our, <laughs> uh, of with our connectivity. Never thought of that. So, um, yeah, the, the amount of applications that, that are coming in, we have about two or three new customers per day, basically knocking on those door, which qualify as, you know, real good fit. Um, yeah. yeah, we are astonished basically by the amount. And apparently the pain in the market is so huge that we don't do any marketing. We don't do any advertising. We don't do anything. And, you know, the, the pipeline is totally filled up. That's beautiful. That's a good position to be in. Yeah, thanks. So. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. And, and in it, so for those listening and wondering when they can go online on, for example, Elon Musk's uh, thing, that's not until 2025. So it seems that sort of like what you're doing. That's a big head start. Yeah, it's a yeah. big head start. And uh, I mean, it's it's tweet sized, but it's uh, if, if you got the company for it, then there's a lot of applications. Yeah, the, the funny part about SpaceX uh, Starlink uh, program as well is that they want to lower the attitude of their satellites now. So the altitude, altitude. altitude yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they want to go into the area that we are in as well. So dun, we are already dun, dun, dun. a little bit fighting there. Ooh. Okay. So real estate becomes a problem. Crowded orbits. Uh, yeah. More and more satellites are being launched. And Do you need permission from anyone? to launch a satellite to this kind of orbit? That's a good one, because uh, early last year, we have seen a company actually launch without permission, and that was the first time that ever happened. <laughs> um, but usually, yeah, you need permission from your own government. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the case of the Netherlands, that is uh, Agentschap Telecom that takes care of that. And uh, they give the permission 
that everything you did at the UN, so the United Nations level, that is being covered. And then the the national delegates basically give you permission to, to launch a satellite as well. Okay, yeah. so real estate in space gets divided somehow. Um, will there be a day um, when, when um, somebody says, no, it's full up, up there? Uh, I don't think so. You know, How many satellites can space handle? Until now, <laughs> we have launched about 15... 100 satellites, I believe, in total. You mean uh, we, we humanity. as a humanity? Yes. No. Oh. Um, so that's that's not a lot. And um, no, if you look like at talking thousands, now. thousands. Yeah, Elon Musk wants to send up twelve thousand. Yeah, it, it, of course. It, and everyone is talking about thousands, but nobody has the money for it yet. So I think you know, <laughs> yeah. as with every startup, some will fail, some will actually come there. Yeah. There will probably be maybe one, two, or three of these constellations um, in towards the future. However. The one characteristic of space is, of course, that it has tremendous amounts of space. So, you know, <laughs> hence the name. Yes. Yeah, but collisions have happened. They did in the past, um, and also from our first launch. Um, so the PSLV launch in India, he was uh, put forward 30 seconds because otherwise it would hit into one of the other satellites. 30 oh seconds. wow! 30 seconds, yeah. And 30 seconds times seven kilometers per second means already 200 kilometers further away yeah. in space. And so, yeah. so how high yeah, are okay. your satellites? Uh, so one is at 500 kilometers, so the other one at 575. Oh yeah, Fi and the 575 one is the one where Elon Musk also wants, yeah. to, wants to be. And how long yeah. will they keep functioning? So the uh, commercial life of the first two satellites, we expect them to be there for a year. One year. One year only. Then the next satellites would have a commercial life of three years. Mm -hmm. However, they will be in space for uh, a few more years there as well. So basically they're degrading, they're going lower and lower and lower, and eventually they burn up in the atmosphere. Oh, so that's nice. Okay, how long will it take? You clean up after yourself. We have to make sure they are cleaned up within 25 years of uh, operation. However, okay. ours will be there within probably 15 years already. Oh. Okay, and I suppose a shoebox-sized satellite will not reach uh, the surface of the Earth again. No, everything will burn, burn up. on the way. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, Sounds good. Good, good for recycling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Kuhn, thank you so much for being here today. This was a super interesting conversation and a, and a little glimpse uh, into the future. So that's that's really nice. It was my honor being here. Thank yeah, you guys. awesome. And okay, I, lots of success to you. Lots and of Hyder. success. And uh, the people watching us on YouTube. Um, they can see that for the first time we're ending while the sun hasn't set yet so that's nice <laughs> it's light it's still light out so spring is coming spring is coming it is. yes we're we're going around the sun once again it we're tilting we're even, starting to tilt the right way again it will be even lighter next week when we do podcast space cowboys number eight number eight yes and until that time you can follow us on spotify on your favorite uh podcast app or YouTube. Still haven't gotten the live up. The, today was maybe going to be today. Maybe next week is going to be the week. Who knows? See you then. This will be a big surprise. See you then. Thank you so much, Herbert. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye Thais.